Today we are turning this image into this assembled mess and from this mess into a full-fledged thumbnail. I always start with making the composition, before trying to make it look beautiful. If I know where everything is placed, I can already envision the final product better. And to be honest, 90% into the process I'm looking at the image thinking, this absolutely sucks, but near the end it all starts coming together. I select some clips in the movie and try to find the right stance and quality I want for the thumbnail. We then have to mask everything out by hand. This is the most boring process, so I usually try the magic mask first, but if it doesn't give me the result I want, I do it by hand. I cut out all subjects and objects I need and place them somewhere in the frame. I mainly use pixels because the images are copyright free. I like placing the subjects in the frame first because they are the center of attention. Then I work from the back to the front. First I place the sky, but it isn't fitting. So I duplicated it and turned it around and drew in the extra part of the sky I needed. Now that the sky is done, we need some distant mountains. I like it when the contrast is already visible in the picture. The further you see, the more atmosphere is accumulated, meaning that it becomes somewhat hazier. I simply cut it out sloppily to save time, because it's in the distance anyway. Then I took a PNG file from a render of the Slave 1 ship I made by myself and placed it into the scene as well. I then made the lightsaber simply by adding a background node with a soft glow on it and masking out the pipe I was holding as a stand-in for the lightsaber. However, there's still a lack of depth, so I added another layer of rocks, which is found on Bexels as well. Since the rocks had a blue background of the sky, I used the delta keyer to remove it, somewhat like a green screen or blue screen. I later on noticed that the direction of the lighting on the rocks was quite unfortunate, as the sun is right behind it on the right, but the light is coming from the left, so I flipped it further on in the process. As I'm still unhappy with the sense of depth, I decided to add a branch in the front. I then use a little trick to get a sense of the right contrast for the scene by placing a color grade node and setting the saturation to zero. We then get a black and white image and I go over each element and add a CC node to increase or decrease the contrast. I then remove the zero saturation node and everything already looks more natural. We're now a little more than one hour into the process and all the elements have been added. I might change some things later on, but for now I will try to make it look more beautiful. I suppressed the blues in the sky, because I didn't want to have a clear color contrast in the sky, which leads away the attention from our subjects in the front. Everything had to be orangey. The same goes for the distant mountains, which were way too blue, so I made them more orange by suppressing the blues and increasing the orange overall. Then I draw the highlights. I find that doing this increases the value of the composition by a long margin, because now the lighting is starting to make sense between the different elements. Here I specifically wanted to use color contrast, so Boba Fett would be the main focus of this image. Blue highlights on this side and orange on the other side. It is for this reason that I flipped the sky in the first place, because the sun is now on the right side. I then drew the highlights on myself, mainly orange for the outer edges, but blue on the inside, because I'm holding a lightsaber. I then finally flipped the rocks, because I was drawing highlights I noticed that the lighting direction was off, so I fixed it. Once again, drawing highlights and shadows as well this time, because it seemed to make sense. I added some globe brush strokes near the horizon to make the sky and distant mountains feel like they're sitting in the same atmosphere. But everything is still pretty flat even though the lighting now makes a lot more sense. So I added a lens flare in the back to overlap with the front and this makes it so that everything seems more grounded. I then added some clouds to the front and back of the subjects to give the illusion of some type of volumetric or atmosphere. To merge the background better with the foreground, I draw some subtle orange and blue glow since it's visible in the front as well as in the back. It makes the image more compatible. As a finishing touch, I added some lens blurs to some of the elements to separate the back from the front some more. Now that I'm happy with the main composition and the way everything sits together, we can go over to the final part which is the color grade. This adds the final touches to the image. I increase the contrast a little bit, but I also increase the orange in the highlights as well as increasing the blues in the midtones. Play around with the color grading notes, it's really intuitive. I added a vignette to guide the attention towards the middle and during the process I sometimes go back into Fusion to patch up some mistakes or things I didn't like. And after all that's done, we're only two hours in, but we've got a pretty decent thumbnail right here. You can add some text in the edit page if you like, and voila, that's how we went from this image to this assembled mess, and from this assembled mess to a composition, and from this composition to a final thumbnail. I hope you enjoyed this walkthrough, and if you want to know how I made these other VFX, I highly recommend watching this video next.